Good yeah, morning, folks. Everything new under the sun. This video is going to be kind of all over the place. I want to do a bit of a what is video, um, although it's in, an, an incomplete one. I also want to take a look at uh, this article from the IsraelWire.com. But what we're going to take a look after uh, after this is um, the um, the rebuilding of the second temple. Were sacrifices started prior to that? And the timeline. Now, it's not something that I've uh, uh, fully researched yet. I'd like to get a timeline down on paper and maybe add it to my timeline of the return of the Lord. I think it's interesting. I've, I have several comments by uh, people every couple of days about, um, you know, the, uh, the situation that um, the, the Jews started sacrificing uh, prior to um, the rebuilding or at least completion of the second temple. And that, uh, the sacrifices uh, started... Um, about uh, 70 years after um, they were given the uh, the uh, the ability to ba basically go back to the land and start rebuilding the temple. So we're going to take a look at a couple of articles. It's uh, totally unfinished, but um, I hope it will be interesting. So first, this one. Iran's ruling Ayatollahs issue call for war against Israel. So this is, this is not new, um, but at least confirms uh, basically each and every day that uh, what, what Iran's true intentions are. And they, in fact, do want to uh, defeat Israel. They want to push them into the sea. So uh, Iran moves to exploit the, uh, the violent jihad riots on the Israeli border today in the past time for Israel's uh, to vanquish her enemies. Surrounding Arab countries will only be too glad, it says. Iran's rulers issued yet another chilling call for Israel's elimination on Friday as the Tehran regime vented its anger at U.S. Donald, uh, President Donald Trump's decision to recognize the Jewish state's sovereignty over the Golan Heights. So the, the, uh, the world is continuing, continuing to be roiled uh, by the fact that uh, uh, Trump uh, acknowledges the uh, Golan uh, as Israel's sovereign land, which they got after being attacked. Uh, which according to uh, international law, if you are attacked and you gain land, then you get to keep that land. Only if you're attacked, not if you initiate the attack. It says the call uh, for what Iran's foreign ministry described as a complete end to the occupation of Palestine was timed to coincide with, the, with Land Day, an annual day of protests and commemorations among Arab citizens of Israel for the six Arab protesters killed in, in uh, violent clashes with Israeli soldiers March 30th, 1976. Um, they say the U.S. President's recognition of Jerusalem as capital and the occupied Golan Heights as part of the illegitimate Zionist regime shows clearly that the Palestinian resistance and perseverance as symbolized by Land Day is the right path, the foreign ministry uh, said. Um, it says, uh, the Islamic Republic of Iran believes that the establishment of a sustainable and fair peace in the region will only be possible through the continuation of resistance until the complete end of Palestine's occupation. And so, uh, Iran uh, definitely wants to get rid of uh, the little Satan Israel, and they uh, definitely want to get rid of the big Satan, which is, uh, um, by their imaginations, the United States. So... <clears throat> interesting revelation um, by Iran, uh, continued revelation, continued speak of uh, basically getting rid of Israel, and uh, we know they hate Israel, um, and no other country hates Israel like I Iran does, and uh, we know that a war will be coming, Ezekiel 38, where Iran and allies uh, will be coming and march against Israel, um, and the most significant player, of course, is Russia, who will have uh, hooks in the jaw, something will hook them, turn their faces around, pull them into the battle. They won't want to. So, a bit of a interesting uh, article there. I want to take a look at, there's, there's several um, interesting articles as it relates to the Second Temple, and, and people have mentioned it, the, uh, the correlation between um, how the Second Temple played out. Now, I haven't got all the, the research done yet. I hope to compile this in, uh, into a visual timeline of the Second Temple, but it's interesting to, to look at. So the second temple was uh, the Jewish holy temple, which stood uh, on the Temple Mount, it says, and this is from Wikipedia, by the way, uh, in Jerusalem during the second temple period between 516 BCE and 70 CE, according to Jewish tradition, it replaced Solomon's temple, the first temple, which was destroyed 
in 586 BCE, uh, when Jerusalem was conquered and part of the population of the kingdom of Judah was exiled uh, to Babylon. It says the second temple was originally a, a rather modest structure um, by a number of Jewish exile uh, groups returning to the Levant. Remember, we did a what is video, but the Levant, it is a massive landmass which covers uh, Israel proper, as we know it today, and parts of Syria, Jordan, Egypt, um, Saudi Arabia, a, a much greater promised land. That's what the Levant refers to. It says, however, during the reign of Herod the Great, the second temple was completely uh, refurbished, uh, and the original structure was totally overhauled into a large magnificent, uh, and magnificent edifices and facades that are more recognizable. It says, much of the Babylonians, uh, much as the Babylonians destroyed the first temple, the Romans destroyed the second uh, in 70 CE. So you can start seeing a timeline here. The sec second temple lasted for a total of 585 years. Um, interesting a little statement here. Jewish eschatology includes the, a brief, uh, a belief rather, that the second temple will be replaced by a future temple. And I would uh, submit to you, and maybe I should update this article, um, uh, Christian, Christian eschatology also believes the second uh, or uh, third temple will be uh, built uh, according uh, to um, the fact that the Bible speaks of uh, the abomination of desolation. The Antichrist will sit on in the temple, on the, thir on the uh, throne, in the third temple, and cease sacrifices. Now, we get into a part where it speaks of Cyrus the Great, and obviously uh, Netanyahu has been calling uh, Donald Trump Cyrus, uh, you know, a, a new Cyrus, uh, for recognizing the land masses of Israel, and will the new Cyrus, i.e. Uh, Donald Trump, will he also um, be around for the agreement to the rebuild the third temple? And that is a very interesting prospect, which is, um, I didn't give it a much weight at the beginning, but, um, and, and not saying that uh, Trump is any miraculous, uh, you know, person supernatural or anything, uh, but he seems to have a part to play in end time Bible prophecy. That's what it seems to be, that's what seems to be happening with his A, recognition of Jerusalem, B, recognition of uh, the Golan Heights, Etc. Here it says the ascension of Cyrus the Great of the Archimenid Empire in 559 BCE made the reestablishment of the city of Jerusalem and the rebuilding of the temple possible. So that seems to be what Trump uh, is uh, heading towards. Some rudimentary ritual sacrifice had, had continued at the site of the first temple following its destruction. After the closing verses of uh, the second book of Chronicles and book of Ezra and Nehemiah. When Jewish exiles returned to Jerusalem following, following a decree from Cyrus the Great, construction started at the uh, original site uh, of the altar of the Solomon's Second Temple. After a relatively brief halt due to uh, opposition from peoples who had filled the vacuum during the Jewish captivity, work resumed 521 BC, uh, BCE under Darius uh, the first and was completed during the sixth year of his reign uh, with the temple dedication. So a pattern is prophecy. That's what the Jews believe. So is there any pattern and then uh, prophecy which you can uh, gather from that based on uh, the timeline of the rebuilding of the second temple? Now the suggestion is that um, after um, the Jews uh, were allowed to uh, return home, um, seven years later, they uh, started building the second temple. And uh, just prior to that, they actually started sacrificing. And that's kind of the detail I'm trying to tease out. I'm trying to, I'm going to uh, try to put this together from the book of Ezra and, and other chapters and uh, see if I can nail this down. I can't f uh, see anybody else so far. And uh, please forward me the documentation if you find it. I haven't seen any previous study on this. And of course, I first looked to previous studies because there's... Uh, you know, you might as well uh, use what someone else has uh, spent hours on if, if something is out there with scriptural references. But I haven't really seen that timeline nailed down yet, at least in my searches so far. So that's for an upcoming uh, video. <clears throat> it goes on here, though. Uh, let's see. Let's go to the, uh, let's see, the second one. So it speaks of this uh, offering uh, called um, the Korban which uh, apparently is something that can take place outside uh, of the temple. In Judaism, the korban 
it is also spelled Corbin or, you know, with a Q or a C, is any of a variety of sacrificial offerings described and commanded in the Torah. Um, the most common usages are animal sacrifice, peace offering, and Olah, or Holocaust. The Corbin was a kosher animal sacrifice, such as a uh, bull, sheep, goat, or a dove that underwent Jewish ritual slaughter. Sacrifices could also consist of grain, meal, wine, or incense. Offerings were often cooked, most would eaten by the offerer, with parts given to the Kohen, the priestly class of uh, people, and small parts burnt on the altar of the temple in uh, Jerusalem. Only in special cases was all uh, of the offering given only to God, such as in the case of the scapegoat. So it describes, let's see, the Hebrew Bible says that God commanded the Israelites to offer, okay, uh, there's a reference here, after the temple was destroyed, sacrifices resumed uh, when the second temple was built, uh, were resumed when the second temple was built until it was destroyed in 70 CE. After the destruction of the temple sacrifices, after the destruction of the second temple rather, sacrifices were prohibited because there was no longer a temple, only uh, place uh, the only place allowed uh, by Halakha for sacrifices offering uh, a sacrifice was briefly reinstated during the Jewish Roman Wars um, of the second century CE and was continued in circum communities thereafter it said um, it says the practice and nature of sacrifices in Judaism are based on the 613 commandments and so a lot of detail here um, according to Jewish perception, the coming Messiah will not remove the requirement to keep uh, the uh, 613 commandments. And, of course, we don't believe that's accurate. Uh, it says most, most Orthodox uh, Jews believe that animal sacrifice will be resumed once the third temple is built. Others believe uh, the prayer of, uh, pr that prayer and Zedakah will suffice, it says. Um, I want to, uh, however, uh, look at uh, some detail of, let's see if it's this article here, yes, okay. So this article, this is from MyJewishLearning.com, it says, from the point of view of Judaism as a religion, there can be no doubt of the historical uh, importance of the restoration of the sacrificial ritual um, in approximately 520 BCE. So in the book of Ezekiel, um, which was uh, written soon after the destruction of the first temple, um, held up a dream of a rebuilt temple in Jerusalem, including an enlarged temple complex, complex in which sacrifice could be offered to an even higher standard of priestly sanctity and ritual purity than that required in the Levitical codes of the Torah. So it speaks to um, the planning of the second temple. Um, uh, again, um, uh, the decree of Cyrus uh, was related here, and of course uh, the decree of Cyrus to go and rebuild the third temple. Um, let me see here, where was I reading? Opposition to the rebuilding of the temple came uh, especially from the nobles who had taken control of Judea after the exile. They were probably closely related to aristocracy uh, of Samaria. It says, among those who encouraged the, prof uh, the project were prophets Haggai and Zechariah, the rebuilding resu resumed in the second year uh, of the reign of Darius, despite continued harassment by neighbors. Building the third temple. Uh, let's go on here. Uh, I think I read it here. And this is where I don't have it all together. Um, they had uh, re started their sacrifices uh, temporarily. Uh, did I miss it here? Oh yes, oh yes. Okay, so here, in this section here, we see sacrifices prior to the rebuilding of the second temple. So Zerubbabel completed the project. Um, he began by erecting a temporary altar on which to offer sacrifices. Since this act seemingly contradicted the requirements of Pentateuchal law, the rabbis later termed it uh, an emergency measure. So uh, what um, the uh, what they've done in Israel right now is they've uh, created uh, um, a structure, uh, 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 an altar. Well, the, the words are escaping me. They created an altar and um, um, they created it without the use of iron instruments, metal instruments, because they're not supposed to do that. Um, so they basically use 
poured concrete as I understand it. They uh, created the altar prior to the rebuilding of the third temple. And there is precedent for this. Uh, in uh, Zerubbabel's time, um, he created a temporary altar. And the rabbis went ahead with it, basically, as an emergency measure prior to the actual uh, rebuilding of the third temple. And so there's a specific timeline here. Uh, from the degree to go and rebuild the temple from Cyrus, um, up until um, the creation of this temporary altar, and then ultimately the uh, finishing, the completion of the temple. Now there's about six, seven years, uh, based on my, my brief review of the, uh, the years BCE, uh, from the altar and uh, the completion of the temple. And so I'm going to make a timeline here. Um, and try and pull this together. But um, again, some uh, Jewish tradition is that pattern equals prophecy. Um, will the third temple happen in the same fashion where they uh, uh, resume sacrifices prior to the actual completion of the third temple? And uh, is, uh, uh, is Trump a sort of a King Cyrus who uh, seems to be pushing this along? There's some interesting parallels there, interesting uh, correlations and like I say to the Jews pattern equals prophecy so if we see a pattern emerging emerging in the uh, the rebuilding of the temple the timeline of the second temple um, does that does that uh, does that constitute a pattern rather than for the third temple so it's something I want to look into so I'm, I'm gonna leave it here for today guys and I, I will do a, a longer uh, more significant uh, video on this one but I kind of want to get the thoughts uh, out there um, and uh, I know uh, many people are thinking about this. So thanks for watching, guys. I'll leave it there for today, and uh, we'll see you guys in the next video, and hopefully I'll have um, some more details about this and a more um, specific timeline um, in the near future. Thanks for watching. We'll see you guys in the next video.